This video is part of the 135 six speed restoration. We've got to the stage where we can set the axles up and set the axle preload. Now, there's an earlier video where we've set the axles up, we've put new bearings in, we've put new seals, new bearings, new collars, and that's all done. And look, it's, a, it's come up well. So now it's time to fit the axles and get a bit of end play. So first up, I've got all, the, all of the old shims and I've gone through and I've measured each and every shim. And like we have 0 0.53, 0 0.52, um, yeah. we have, this is in metric, 0.43, we have a few 0.43s, 0.52, 0.53, and I've just marked them on the, on with a um, with a whiteout pen, I suppose a paper mate whiteout pen. So I've measured all of the shims, and just as a starting point, I've chosen to put in on on this left side here. I've put in. Uh, 0.66 millimetre shim and a 0.60 millimetre shim and that's just as a starting point and on this right hand side I've put a 0.66 millimetres or a 0.55 millimetre shim. Now um, keep in mind that 0.5 of a millimetre is around 20 thou so 0.6 of a millimetre um, you know, you add a little bit more, so um, we, we can either work in metric or imperial, but um, the other ones I've done in imperial, so I thought I'd do this one in metric, just for, just for a way of change. So, so I've, th there's a seal in the centre housing here. Now, um, there's an outer dirt seal on your axle and there's an inner one. Now, for doing the axle setup, I leave this one out. Um, if you have to take the axle on and off a couple of times, there's no real sense in having to drag the axle across the seal or you, you have a chance of damaging the seal. So we haven't done that. We've left the seals out. Each side has to come back um, on and off a couple of times normally. And I've tightened with the two shims in the axle here, I've fitted four nuts. There's 12 studs there, so um, you know every third bolt gets a nut. And I've tightened them up to 55 foot-pounds. Um, I don't know what that is in Newton metres, so much for staying metric. <laughs> I, do, I do one thing in one and one thing in another. Look, that's fine, as long as you know. Um, so we've got both sides bolted up and the thing we need to do before checking the, um, the end float in the axle is we have to make sure that both sides are tight um, and also we have to make sure whichever side we're measuring from, and in this instance we're measuring from the left hand side, well we need to make sure that the right hand axle is at its full extremity so we just put a bar in here one in each side I like to make sure you don't touch the seal and lever that this way as hard as you can now that's all you need to do with these new seals in here they have a the new seals have a firm leather um, seal in them so once it's out there it will stay out there um, I haven't had any troubles with that. So, look, what we'll do now, now we've made sure that side is locked out hard, we'll work on the left-hand side here as sitting on the seat, and we'll just run through how we like to check the end float. Right, I'm on the left-hand side now, and on the left-hand side here, because we've pushed the other axle out hard against as far as it will go that way, we need to actually find our zero point. So 
and I'll just lean down here and get a punch. And what we've done, I'll just have an alloy punch here and we make sure that the axle is right that way, pushing up against that outer axle as hard as we can. So that's, that's just by tapping it across there. So we'll try and get our, our digital dial gauge on. Yep, you can see that. And we'll try and zero that. So we have zero there now and we're reading in millimetres. Now, the book says, the, the workshop manual says what we're looking for is, um, we're actually looking for 0 0.05 millimetres to 0.2 of a millimetre. And in Imperial, that works out to be two to eight thousandths of an inch. So we've pushed the axle that way as far as we can. I'll just drop my punch down there out of the way. And what we need to do now, we have our zero point, is come in, do like we did on the other side, and lever the axle. far as we can. So it looks like there we have 0 0.24 of a millimetre. So we'll check that again. We'll just make sure our zero goes back to zero. And these are that sensitive I do have trouble zeroing it so Okay, there we are on zero. Hopefully it stays on hopefully it stays on zero. Now we'll bring the bars in each side, making sure we don't touch the seal or rock the axle or anything. So 0 0.2, 0 0.22 of a millimetre. So the setting is 0.05 to 0.2. So we have a little bit more there than we really like. That's on the um, that's on the high side of the setting, and we have new bearings here. So let's try and get it on the low side of the setting. So this is where having all the shims marked with how thick they are will work to our benefit. So we'll have a look at what shims we have where and what shims we could take out to, um, to give us 0.16 of a millimetre tighter. So some of these fatter shims here, we need to take one out and put one in that's a little bit smaller. So we'll go around the back, we'll have a look at the numbers on our shims and the shims that we have available to us and we'll work it from there. Well, if we look on the left-hand side here, we have 0.66 to 0 0.60 millimetres. And on the right-hand side, this is left here, on the right-hand side we have 0.66 to 0.55 millimetres. So, if we want to get point, um, 0.16 out of our adjustment that we have there already, we need to remove some shims. So we have to actually work out what shims we have and what shims would do the job for us with what we have here. You can buy different sizes but um, yeah we'll just have a look and see. So look, what we'll do here is, oh we can't really see that can we? Okay look, well so <laughs> we can't see the calculator it's just flashing out for us, it's too bright. So if we take our, let's just take this one for instance. So if, if we go 0 0.6 for a millimetre minus 
0 0.16, that equals 0.44. So if we have a 0.44 shim here in our shims that we measured earlier, we could possibly take this 0 0.60 shim out and put a 0 0.44 in and that should get us right on the money. So we have a 5.2, a 5.3, a 4.3, oh they're close, but look we do have, by more good luck than good management, a 0 0.44. So we're about 0.16 of a millimetre too tight, so um, look that's, that's not much. It's, um, the 0.2 of a millimetre is 8 thou and the 0 0.5 that we're aiming for is 2 thou. Or, or with brand new bearings I don't mind going a little tighter but not much. And so um, by doing this, this should bring us back to the, um, on the dial gauge there, on the, on the test, on, on the indicator, digital indicator, it should bring us pretty well back to 0 0.05, so on the tighter setting. So, look, I'll switch off, I'll unbolt all this, I'll replace the shims, and I'll take the 0 0.60 out, I'll put the 0 0.44 in, I'll put my four bolts in, retention them to 50 foot-pounds, and we'll go through the whole test exercise once more, and, look, I think we'll be close enough to be there, but at this stage I'm still not going to put the seal in. Um, at this stage I've got nothing to stop it leaking and normally I just like the oh, tiniest little smear of sealer on these shims and in the past I've had them where they, um, I've put nothing on them and over a few years you just see a little, just a little bit of grease weeping around here but you shouldn't really have oil getting in there if you've replaced the seal. So, so when you look at the parts manual also, it shows that all the shims are between the brake backing plate and the axle flange here. There's none on the other side, which I suppose would keep the brake shoe and the um, drum and all in line with the end of the axle nice and evenly. So, And the adjustment would be made as the whole unit comes out. So, um, so look, we'll pop this side off, we'll replace this shim and we'll come back then. Well you can see here I've put the new seals in, I'll put the new seal in here. Now the reason I've put the seal in at this stage is we've done our measurements, we're pretty confident we're going to be very close and we're going to be close enough that we can actually leave it there. Um, like, you know, even if it's one thou or you know, a couple of thou, um, we can actually work with it, we're close enough. So. So what I've done, I've, I've taken the um, taken the 0 0.60 shim out and put a 0 0.44 shim in, which should take up our adjustment pretty well. Now, on these shims here, I have two shims. I have the brake plate down first, and then two shims, and I've just put a tiny little bit of aviation cement on those shims. Now, they won't make our adjustment change at all, but over the years I have seen them weep around, um, around this flange a little bit. So, um, on that flange there, um, I have seen the old attractors and they do tend to weep a little bit. So, I have a little bit of Loctite aviation, just Loctite number three, I think it is. So, I've just put a slight smear of that and you'll notice I've put the smear towards the inside. Um, the inside where the shoulder is, like there's a shoulder and the flange that it sits over, I've, I've just put, put it around there, not the outside, so hopefully it stays a bit cleaner. And you'll also notice that I've put a... Um, um, well, I've, I've actually painted the brake backing plate. And this tractor did a lot of slashing or topping in its time and both backing plates were very peppered, um, sandblasted and particularly the right hand side one as, um, as 
from the top of a slasher, they often go anti-clockwise. And so the left, or the right hand, sorry, backing plate really cops are hiding. So both of them were very poor, so I've sandblasted them and just put a little bit of paint on at this stage. And look, it was just to stop rust after I'd um, painted them. So we'll get the camera set up once more and we'll actually put it up, put the axle in there and we'll do another check and see how we go. Look, I thought I'd just film lifting this axle in. So we'll, we'll pick it up now. It's important to really support it through the seal and you do get to a stage where the axle sits inside the axle housing a bit but you can still stop it rubbing against the seal so we're just coming up into the diff there now you can set these up wrong you need to make sure that your brake rod going across to the housing is all lined up and we're just about we're entering the diff there okay now those you slide back here and just make sure that brake is even look that's not we have to come around one turn, or one bolt hole at least. And then if we slide out the front here for a look, we are, that brake rod is sitting nice and parallel. So we should be able to bump this in now. And give him a turn as it goes into the diff gears. And once you get this far, we can pop four bolts on once more. And check our inflow. Oh, we've only just got to start there. We might just run a nut down and pull it in just a little bit just to get a couple of threads so we don't pull one. There's no tension here, there shouldn't be any tension there, if you've got tension you've got trouble. And I always like with bearings to turn them as you bring them in and that way you know that the rollers are sitting nice and neatly too. Okay, we'll do this and then we'll come back. Okay, we've got the whole axle assembled. We've gone over to the right hand side and we've barred the axle out as far as it can go. And I've punched this axle in that way to get our zero point. So once more, we bring our bars in through the back here. Hold a little bit of pressure there, and we're 0 0.07 of a millimetre. So and that's holding holding load there. So at our zero point, so we have our zero point, and look, we're in spec. 0 0.07. It depends if we turn it just <laughs> just a little bit. We lose our zero, but we'll try again. So we'll bump him in. Set our zero. There's our zero. I need to get a better hold or I need a proper Noga one or something like that. So we put the bars in, trying not to turn it. And 
look, we're right on. Look, we're that close to the lower side, it doesn't matter. So that's a good thing. Now, another test for this, um, you'll also see here I've scrubbed out the 0 0.60 and I've put the 0 0.44 there. Um, just so I could keep track of what I was doing if I needed to. That can just sit up there out of the way. So when we turn this one way, with the pinion held, the other gear or the other axle should turn in the opposite direction. So it's just worth a quick check of that. If you've buggered this up and you have it way too tight, um, you'll find that when you turn this, say, forwards, the other side comes forward too because the axles are hitting in the centre and there's enough drag there to bring the other axle forward with you. So if you do the job and that's what you have, you've got it way too tight. So try and back everything off. Try and I try, as in this job, to go to the lowest setting because we have new bearings. New bearings will wear over time and, and it just keeps things good if it was a... Um, if it was a second-hand bearing and we were just going to pop a seal in and go again, well, yeah, I mightn't be so worried about coming to the to the smaller setting. You know, we may leave it at, at 0.2 of a millimetre or, you know, 0.15 or, um, you know, which is, say, 5 thou or something like that. So. so what we're going to do from here, I put the seal in here. This one's right to go. I need to put all the nuts with the spring washers on here and... Um, that then will have a um, um, have that side all buttoned up and nothing should change. I've tightened these up and I'll go around the other side and I'll just show you a couple of little things on the right hand side. And the importance here is because of the diff lock. Okay, at the moment we're around the right hand side and um, we, we have to pull this side off yet and um, put the outer axle seal in and, and put a little bit of glue on the shims but something I thought I'd like to show you is on this side here you have the diff lock now when you pull the axle out the diff lock collar can drop and it can be a bit of a nuisance when that drops and this diff lock collar um, it can be a nuisance with if it drops and when you have the outer axle seal in and you're trying to jiggle and line up, it's, it's easier to damage that seal. So um, what you can do is hold your diff lock pedal down and turn your axle until your diff lock engages. And now you'll see this little bolt here. I've got mine set up that I can hold that down and I'll just come around the other way a little bit. just so I can get a bit of leverage on it. And I can push down on there and just screw that in a couple of turns. Now, that's a TE20 petrol, <laughs> probably a TEA or TED20 head stud. And what I like to do is put that there. Um, you can adjust this pedal down a little bit if, you, if it doesn't quite line up like that for you. Um, and get a get a nice long 11 six, oh sorry 7 16th UNC bolt and put in there. So what I can do now is with that pedal locked down like that, I can now undo my axle just the same as I've done on the other side, and I'll tidy up the shims, put a little bit of glue on them, put the seal in, and go back. So I just thought I'd show you that little bit as part of this video. Well, there you go. There's two axles done. Now, the bolts on the outside of the, um, that hold the axles in, um, they're 55 foot-pounds, which turns out to be around 70 newton metres. But you'll find when you go to put a socket on, it's, it's hard to get a tension wrench in there and actually get a correct um, tension on them. And, yeah, look, I just... <laughs> I, um, I don't get too carried away with the tensions on those. I just make them nice and tight. And... So with the axles done, we, can, we don't have to pull that apart anymore. Um, hopefully now we can move on to either the brakes or if you have a look down the middle here, there's a big hole there. So 
we're not that far away from putting the gearbox back on. So, look, we'll, we'll just poke along as we get parts and, um, yeah, we'll move along to something else.